Stop praising him. Yeah, let the Holy Spirit do your heart what the Holy Spirit wants to do with your heart. Amen. The presence of the Lord is in this place. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Mm. Jesus, look at somebody right now and say, Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> Ah, Whew. my God. Mm. Praise the Lord, sisters, mothers in Zion, women of God. I have a, an apparel line that says, I'm DWI. Driving while ignited. As I drove in this morning, you know, I just say, Lord, please. I set the cruise control and I speed up the cruise control. You know. <laughs> I spoke with Sister Angela. Thank you so much for this invitation. Give women working with women empowered some love. This is very significant. I want to acknowledge all of you that are here, and I learned not to call names because you get in trouble. <laughs> People say, you ain't call my name. I was there. I was drunk. I couldn't even see you. <laughs> thank you all. I want to thank God for all of the fivefold ministers that are here. Amen. My family. My childhood friend, Lord Jesus, I got to act good today. 
I, I was wondering, and she said, the library. I said, the library? I'm going to say something in the library. You're supposed to be quiet in the library. So if I get loud, y'all just say, shh, in the library. How's the house? Bless you. That's powerful testimony. It needs to go across the world. Because people stop believing that God is real and he healed today. Well, I asked about a PowerPoint. I guess the only PowerPoint we're going to have is the Holy Ghost. Power has, my notes is too light in here anyway. And all kind of other stuff I had wrote down. It's just, I don't know. So I'm, I'm just going to, I'm going to wing it. I'm, gonna do, I'm just going to have to wing it. Amen. Is that all right? Praise the Lord. Bless you. I'll be here from the belly. Jesus. I'm trying to come. I'm trying to come. I'm trying to come. Look here. Uh, so my name is Patricia Gale. Don't call me evangelist Patricia Gale. Don't call me prophetess. I don't like when they say apostle. You know, no titles have responsibility. I don't want no title. Just call me sister. I'm good. Now, it's good when you know Sister Patricia. Now, I don't know if you want to know Sister Pat. <laughs> but Sister Pat was around before the Jesus, the blood, and the Holy Ghost got a hold on her. You know. So people way back may call me Gail. Call me Gail. I know somebody called me Gail. They, they knew me from way, way back, sis. God bless you all. Today we're going to have a... Uh, I'm going to try to do this in three seconds, Sister Angela. <laughs> Bless you. I'm going to start with um, my career. Amen. Um, then I'm going to go into your career. Then we're going to talk about what God is doing now. And remember, I don't have no notes. So we might have to follow up another way. Look, I practiced real estate in this city 30 plus years. I left here, moved to New Orleans, started a business there, not on my own, because the Lord sent me. I don't go nowhere on my own. The Lord called me and said, uh, through one of the entities, the homeless rate really bad. You need to come down here. I ain't from New Orleans. I don't even like New Orleans. We dirty. I was born in New Orleans. Grandmother and everybody. So they kept calling me. One man came to my door and I was off. I don't tell people when I'm off today for that reason. You need to catch. You need to come down here and tell these preachers what you're doing, what you're doing in our church. I said, man, I ain't trying to go. They ain't had a Zoom and all the technology that you have now. But anyway, I went, 1999. And uh, I spoke to the leaders because the people worked hard in New Orleans, but they had nobody to teach them how to get the houses. They had good credit and they had good jobs, but nobody would tell them the process. So I was going back and forth. You know, I said, look, I got to go to Detroit. Come back, I land in New Orleans. I'll come over and see what y'all doing. I walked in the room, the room was packed. Oh, they don't know these people, these people don't know me. But there was a need. And that caused me to move to New Orleans and stay in New Orleans until Hurricane Katrina said, okay, you got to go now. <laughs> you got enough people in houses. You got enough people empowered. They were doing what they call predatory lender, lending, charging high, high interest rates and just abusing the people. So I started a mortgage company, Kingdom Mortgage USA. I got in trouble with the people up top. They said, you're not charging enough fees. I said, I'm not trying to charge enough fees. I'm trying to keep the people rates low. So they wouldn't process my loans. I flew to Vegas, all my loans on the floor. I said, Lord, I'm mercy, all I got is my name. I called him, I said, I'm out, I'm done. 
They said, well, open your own processing company. I said, okay. Well, that was another business. I started processing real estate loans. Before Katrina, I hired 41 loan officers because God told me to take it to the church. He said, I want you to show them how to distribute wealth in the body of Christ without beating on the backs of people with tithes and offerings. Nobody up in here, you know. Bishop Paul Martin said, <clears throat> you do it for my church, I'll network you all over the country. And I did. And Hurricane Katrina said, I told you, you got to go. That's too much money that you're bringing in the body of Christ for the world. So I left part of Hurricane Katrina and I gave up the mortgage company. I had left my last client. I said, I'm done with this. Because they were squeaky clean. There was nothing hindering them. And they took them through all kinds of changes. I said, this is not what we're going to do. So from there, I'm going to a prayer breakfast now, similar to this trying to figure out what I'm supposed to do with my life. Because after 27 years in real estate, and the city was washed out, 200, 300,000 people gone. My house, I thought was the only one standing. I lived in Chateau on the corner. I'm looking at the car go by. People got mad with me and say, why your house is flood? Because I got on my knee on the radio and asked God, don't let it flood. Right. Right. Going somewhere with this. So anyway, I'm going to a prayer breakfast to see what I'm supposed to do with my life. My brother told me to get a job. I'm going to get a job and I done hired 400 agents. I don't know how to get no job. I'm an employer. Amen. Like some of you all are going to be after this meeting. I'm going to speed up. Anyway. Went to the prayer breakfast on the way to, I mean, to the prayer retreat in Alabama on the way to person said, you know, they got a contraband. They got a hurricane. So what are you talking about? They said, yeah, they got, you can't get back to Louisiana. I said, oh, no. Hurricane Gustav hit and I couldn't get back home. That's how I ended up in Alabama. I didn't just pick up and say, I'm leaving Baton Rouge, leaving New Orleans. No, the wind blew me in. So I went from a multi-million dollar producer making three hundred and some thousand dollars a year to being homeless. Driving two cars, giving cars away, Mercedes. I ain't talking about no hoop. BMWs, Lexus, whatever I wanted. That's what I drove. Because somebody told me, you're in real estate, you got to represent. I was representing all right with them dogs on car notes coming at me. <laughs> You go buy this house because I got to pay the car notes. <laughs> anyway, got stuck in Alabama, couldn't get back. People I had said I was staying with, they, I called them and said, well, I don't know where you at, so, but you better stay because we gone because the hurricane come. I said, Jesus, I knew nobody. I slept in my car in a Walmart parking lot while well, Hurricane Gustav did his thing. I couldn't get home. Family, where I left my luggage, the roof had fell in. If I'd have been there, the roof would have fell in on me. All kinds of stuff. I'm telling you about a journey to a wealthy place. That's where we're going. No, what? And the Lord said, this is where I want you to stay. I said, in this car? Got sciatic nerve and everything else. Everything was shut down. I ended up staying in the motel where I had to put an ironing board behind the door to lock the door. And the maintenance man was saying, you can come stay with me. <laughs> I'm trying to hurt, I'm trying to help somebody. So anyway, got past that. Fast forward, somebody gave me somewhere to stay. I stayed in an apartment. I gave somebody a prophetic word. And they called and said, where are you? And I told them, I'm saved, y'all. They said, what the hell are you doing up there? I said, it is hell up in here. So they put me up in a better hotel, gave me a key to the apartment for four months. 
So don't worry about no rent, no nothing. And I just laid on the floor and prayed. I had no furniture. I left a half a million dollar house. So those things don't mean anything to me anymore. What I've learned through this journey is not about stuff and material things. God is concerned about his people. He's concerned about you. Status quo, been that, done that. I put seven billboards up in this city, all around this city when I was in Little State. I was the 21 Golden Girl and American Girl all at one time. Through my pain, I gain. If you've gone through any pain, it's for you to gain character, integrity, love, joy, and peace, and righteousness in the Holy Ghost. So I started doing a little something in Alabama. Online, God said, I want you to teach your people how to save their house from foreclosure. I'm like, what? I ain't got a house myself. You tell me to teach somebody how to save their house from foreclosure. But I did, and I still do. We don't publicize that because that's people, private information. So when Katrina and Rita tore down the real estate company that I had built, because I was the million dollar producer. I built it. I did all the houses and this and that and the other and bad words. I did that. Then one day God said, when you going to turn loose your idol? Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, that's your idol. You all that. You depending on me. I'm like, oh, Lord, wait now. Wait, I'm, I'm talking about in the name of Jesus. Get <laughs> And, and see that 300000 I made? I had an accountant for 10 years who feared a Judas of jealousy got in there. And when my mom passed, I didn't read my tax thing. I just signed it. Then I get a tax bill for an astronomical amount. Then I was hiding from the IRS for about eight years. Every time the thing come on the radio, if you owe IRS more than $10,000, we're going to go to your wages and, and we're going to come get you. Oh, Jesus. I'm checking my bank account. So I couldn't make no money. People wonder, why are you struggling? I can't tell you yet. <laughs> you will understand. But I want you to know I found the fish with the gold in his mouth. Come on. First, I had to forgive that tax person for turning that paperwork in, having me to owe all them taxes. Y'all to thank God for women working with women empowered because you have professionals that will help you that are fear God and won't be trying to do stuff for themselves. So after I finally got out of my fear and my shame, because I wouldn't tell nobody, I'm still helping people, but I'm, I'm broke and disgusted myself. But God was putting something in me. He sent people to help me. I got rid of that tax bill. Whew. Jesus. Oh, y'all ain't got to clap. I'm free. That was a long sentence. I was in prison a long time in my mind. God showed me how to do them taxes. He showed me how to go over the IRS and, and they helped me. He showed me how to do the offering compromise. Then he supernaturally canceled the rest of the debt. He said, now I want you to go teach my people. I want you to testify and teach my people how to, how to find the fish with the gold in the mouth and, and teach my people how to speak to the mountains and command it to be moved. He didn't say climb up the rough side of the mountain. See, texting, I'm in my book now, uh, Victory on the Front Line, uh, second chapter is voice. 
texting has taken the audible power out of people's mouth. Everybody texting, you ain't saying that. You need to start talking again, women. You need to start prophesying and decreeing and saying the promises of God. A text is good. You can get the message to it, but ain't no power in the text. If the enemy has shut the mouth of the body of Christ, reject it and emojis and thumbs up. Oh, leave me alone. Technology has nullified the revelation and the anointing and the power of God that God has given his people when he say lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Cast out devils in Jesus' name. Cleanse COVID in the name of Jesus. Raise the dead. Yeah. I said, wait a minute here. How many followers you got? What? I hate that social media. Y'all see me on it because of business. Sometimes it don't even be me. I do not like that. How I many follow? Don't follow me. All them followers have demons. People come here, friend me, friend. I ain't friending you. You got 4,000 people following you. That's 4,000 demons. I don't need them in my life. I have a television network now. First chapter of my book, Vision. God bless me with a global television network. American dreams do come true. ADDCT network. You need to check it out. Good news only. Reaching into 50, 55 million households. Mm -hmm. Any one person could go on there and God say, okay, I'm going to give them a dollar from each household and it's over. But my heart and my character had to be right. So that the money won't replace the presence and the humility to stay before God. Yeah. How many followers you got? I don't need but two. Two. That's all I need. Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the day of my life. As long as they follow me, I don't care about the rest of the people. Y'all need to unfriend some of them demons on your page. Some of them, them peeping and wondering and witchcraft spirits. You on that testifying what you doing and they on that praying and masturbating what they doing. Oh, y'all hold it up in here, huh? Okay, I'm about to break it down now. Victory on the front line means war. That means that I've been to hell and back. Just like some of you. And you need to know the reason you've been is on the front line is now to take the enemy back and put him in his place under your feet and remain seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. Oh, wow. 